Redeemer. Welcome to Math with Mr. Saris once again. I'm Mr. Saris, a teacher here at Dallas Lutheran School. Today I'm going to talk to you about drawing pictures of fractions, along with a couple of other topics that we'll later discuss. First of all, let's learn how to shade one half in three different ways. Important things to remember about this skill. We need to make sure that all of our shapes are going to be the same size. Another thing we need to remember is that we always have to divide it exactly into equal parts. I'll show you a couple ways to do this. One of the ways we could do it is we could divide it horizontally, right along the horizon. So if I was going to shade one half of this, I would shade one of these two pieces. So I've shaded one half. Another way I could divide it is to divide it vertically or up and down. And when I shade one of these two pieces, I shade one half of this square. The third way I could divide it would be to divide it diagonally into two triangles. And if I shade one half again, half of the square is shaded. Because all three of these squares are roughly the same size, if I shade one half in any of these three ways, I've shaded one half of this square. Another example of something that we could do is to shade one third in two different ways. As you can see, I've drawn two big rectangles here. I've made them about the same size. I've chosen two different ways to divide them. The first way I've chosen to divide them is vertically. Remember, all three pieces are roughly the same size. We want to try to get as close to the same size as possible for each of the pieces we're dividing into. The other way I've divided them is horizontally. Notice, once again, all three pieces are roughly the same size. So if I shade one third in two different ways, here are two diagrams with three thirds each. And if I divide them and shade them, I'm going to shade one third of this first rectangle. And I've chosen to shade the first third. In the second one, I'm going to choose to shade the middle part. And in each of these examples, I've shaded one-third of the rectangle. The second skill we're going to learn about today is comparing fractions. To do this today, we are going to use pictures. The first picture is going to be of two circles. We're comparing one-fourth and one-half. Each of these circles, which are roughly the same size, has been divided into four equal parts. Remember, it's very important to divide your circles, or whatever your shape happens to be, into equal parts. What I'm going to do to compare is I'm going to shade one-fourth in this first circle. I've shaded one-fourth of this circle using blue. In the second circle, I'm going to shade one-half in order to compare. If I shade one-half of the circle, Upon comparison, I notice that if I've shaded one-half, I've shaded far more than I've shaded if I only shade one-fourth. So I know that one-half is bigger. To show this, I'll simply circle one-half as being bigger. In the second example, we're going to pair, compare two more difficult fractions one-half, and one-third. I think you'll see that when we divide our, our rectangles into equal parts, very important, remember, I've divided this into two horizontally. Next to it, I've divided this rectangle into three equal parts. When I shade one-half of the first rectangle, I shade the top. 
I've put my rectangles in a configuration so as, so as easily to, to compare the fractions. When I shave one third of it, I notice that because they're right next to each other, I can see that one half is far greater than one third. So in my bubble over here, I'm going to put that one half is greater than one third. I've used fractions and drawings to compare the relative sizes of each of them. Thanks for watching.